Hello, my name is Travis Munyer, and I will be presenting our paper titled Foreign Object Debris Detection for Airport Pavement Images Based on Self-Supervised Localization and Vision Transformer. First, what is Foreign Object Debris, or FOD? The Federal Aviation Administration defines any object, live or not, located in an inappropriate location in the airport environment that has the capacity to injure airport or air carrier personnel and damage aircraft as foreign object debris, or FOD. FOD is responsible for billions of dollars in damages to aircraft each year. Additionally, accidents caused by FOD can lead to injury or death. A robust, automatic, and affordable method for FOD detection is crucial for the safety of flight operations at airports, especially given the size and complexity of airports will keep increasing. Current FOD detection is primarily performed manually using methods such as FOD walks. Automated FOD detection methods can help reduce the negative impact of manual FOD detection and on airport operations and better address human error. Most existing automated detection systems rely on radar-based technologies. However, these methods have not been widely adopted due to their high cost. For example, Boston Logan International Airport adopted one of these radar-based detection systems, specifically FOD Detect, in 2013 for a total estimated cost of $1.71 million, which only included the installation of a single runway. More economical automated FOD detection techniques could be beneficial to large-scale prevention of costly aircraft safety events, as more airports would be able to afford them. In addition, new detection techniques should be scalable to different airport environments and locations. Given the relatively low hardware cost to implement computer vision and deep learning based methods, such as a camera at minimum, and the growing capabilities of unmanned aircraft systems UA or UAS technology, the integration of computer vision and UAS technology is expected to be advantageous over many existing FOD detection methods in airport operations. A novel FOD detection method based on this integrative approach is developed and introduced in this paper. There are some challenges with using computer vision for FOD detection that are addressed in this work. First, supervised detection methods are impractical for FOD detection because they can only detect predefined classes due to their dependence on a data set with predefined classes and samples, while FOD is a broad data type. Another idea visited in previous works is to store a database of original runway and taxiway images and use direct image processing techniques to see if the images have changed. This requires excessive image collection that is specific to airports and may not be robust to subtle changes in airport environments. A method that can detect previously unseen categories of objects and is robust to subtle changes in airport environments is more desirable and practical for FOD detection. Based on a review of the related FOD detection works and on the practical needs of airport operators, a FOD detection method that can detect arbitrary categories of FOD requires minimal image collection requirements and is, ec and is economical to implement is desirable. This research gap is identified and addressed by the presented paper. Specifically, this work provides a novel computer vision and deep learning based FOD detection solution that is developed considering the limitations of existing methods and the practical demand of airport operators. The primary advantages of this work can be summarized as the following three com contributions. First, an extensible data collection framework is developed to support self-supervised FOD localization. Second, a self-supervised VIT-based FOD localization method is proposed, which is not dependent on annotated data, is not airport specific, and is more economical than existing radar-based systems. And three, an extension of the FOD localization is pre to perform classification. These contributions will next be discussed in more detail. First, the data used in the data collection framework will be discussed. The data is collected as videos from a local airport using UAS to reflect our goal of detecting FOD automatically, automatically from the aer aerial perspective. 
We collect the videos at 30 feet, 60 feet, and 140 feet from the runway surface, providing ground sample distances of 0.1 inch a pixel, 0.2 inch a pixel, and 0.46 inch a pixel, respectively. After data collection, we found that the 60 feet and 140 feet videos lose too much detail, so 30 feet videos are used in the data set. Frame rate of videos is reduced to minimize duplicate frames, and the frames are separated to provide an image data set. The 3840 by 2160 resolution frames were then resized to the nearest multiple of 448 by 448, and then split into an 8 by 4 grid of 448 by 448 patches. This reduces the size of input images while retaining the detail of the collected data. The training dataset contains only clean images of runways and taxiways. The clean images do not require, do not contain font objects and therefore do not require annotation. The testing dataset contains videos of runways and taxiways where font objects were randomly distributed across the pavement. The testing dataset has bounding box annotation for font objects to support performance evaluation. Using this data collection framework, we are able to collect 81,185 images for training efficiently. Processing the testing data results in 447, 447 testing patches. Each of these 447 patches are annotated with bounding boxes for evaluation purposes. Within each 448 by 448 patch with FOD, the FOD object is manually annotated with a bounding box using the computer vision annotation tool, otherwise known as CVAT. The annotations are then exported from CVAT and converted into a CSV file. These annotations are provided with the data set. And on this slide, we have a few examples of data in the data set. The top row is some examples of training data that does not contain any fobbed objects, as you can see. The bottom row is testing data with some example bounding box annotations. As you can see, the bottom row images do contain FOD objects. With an understanding of the data used for this method, we can now discuss the FOD localization method. The proposed method provides FOD localization in the patches using a reconstruction technique. The reconstructed patches are used to propose patch-specific segmentation maps that label the background and the anomaly. As needed, the patch-specific segmentation maps can be combined to provide a full image segmentation or to display the FOD localizations on the entire image. Anomalous areas are cropped from the patch-specific segmentation map and normalized before classification. The reconstruction component of the method utilizes a specifically designed autoencoder to perform its function. The clean or FOD absent runway images are collect collected using the data annotation collection framework discussed previously to train this autoencoder. Intuitively, the autoencoder must reconstruct new images such that previously unseen objects are reconstructed with a high degree of error, while normal runway surfaces are reconstructed well. In order to provide this property correctly, the architecture of the autoencoder must be selected carefully. For more details on the architecture used for this autoencoder and the method used to select it, please reference section 3b of the paper and the figure shown in this slide. As a summary, we found a hybrid VIT and convolutional architecture performed well. Once the autoencoder is performing with the specifications mentioned previously, it is utilized in the way shown on this slide. First, the input image is patched to the input size required by the autoencoder. Next, the patches are reconstructed using the autoencoder. The absolute difference between the original patches and the patch reconstructions is then computed. We threshold the absolute difference image automatically using Atsu's method. Any of these threshold patches with non-zero values after the thresholding are considered anomalous patches. These anomalous patches provide the localization as shown in the figure. For more details on this process, please refer to section 3b of the paper. The critical component of the proposed method is the localization. 
However, classifying the detected objects may be useful to downstream tasks, such as automated FOD reporting systems. Therefore, we extend the localization method to perform object classification. The segmentation maps are used to crop detected objects out of the original image. The cropped object is then classified using a standard supervised classifier such as DenseNet. Since the critical localization component is performed using a self-supervised method, it is acceptable for the classification component to be supervised as a beneficial extension to the proposed solution. With an understanding of the methodology, we will now discuss the experimental analysis of the proposed scheme. We propose a metric called detection rate to evaluate the method. Detection rate is defined to be the number of correct localizations divided by the total number of images in the testing data set. A correct localization is a localization is defined to be correct if the IOU of the predicted localization and the ground truth is above a threshold. The threshold used in the evaluation is 0 0.3. The reasoning behind choosing this value is discussed in more detail in section 4b of the paper. We create several different model architectures for the reconstruction component and compare between them using this detection rate metric calculated on the testing data set. In the experiments, the best performing architecture is the outer VIT model with a detection rate of 82.7. The meaning of the name and the architecture of the outer VIT model is provided in section 4b of the paper. The outer VIT model is then compared to architectures proposed in previous works. First, FOD A is a FOD object detection dataset presented in one of our previous works. The SSD model trained on FOD A in the previous work has a detection rate of 79.6%. The YOLO model trained on FOD-A in the previous work has a detection rate of 66.7%. As shown in the table, the proposed localization method outperforms the best performed performing supervised model by 3.1% and provides the additional benefit of scaling to previously unseen classes, unlike the supervised method. The results of the classification component is discussed next. The classification component is evaluated separately from the localization component. We crop the objects in the FOD-A images to the bounding boxes included in the FOD-A annotations. We then train ResNet, MobileNet, and DenseNet on cropped FOD-A dataset. As shown in the table, DenseNet performs the best out of these models with an accuracy of 99.94% on the FOD-A validation dataset. In summary, this work provides a self-supervised method for font detection, the data collection framework required to support this method, and an extension of the FOD localization method for classification. As shown in the evaluation section of the paper, the proposed scheme outperforms supervised methods YOLO and SSD. Since the method is self-supervised, it provides the additional capability to scale to previously unseen objects unlike su supervised object detection methods. The dataset used was made publicly available to support future works. Future works could explore generalization of the proposed localization method to data types where background scenarios are known in advance. Additionally, the experiments propose an organizational concept called a learning block, where convolutional layers and VIT layers are easily interchangeable. The learning blocks were used to streamline the experiments comparing the performance impact of interchanging convolutional and VIT layers in models. Additional work could explore scenarios where the VIT learning layers outperform the convolutional learning layers. All right, that's all I have for you. Thank you for listening in on this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to email us with the contact information listed in the paper. Thank you.